One of the reasons why, why the middle class of this country is disappearing, one of the reasons why most or many of the new jobs being created are low wage and part time, one of the reasons why real inflation accounted for wages for Amer American workers has plummeted is because of these disastrous free trade agreements. Since 2001, we have lost nearly 60,000 factories in this country. Over that same time period, we have lost over 4.7 million manufacturing jobs. In 1970, 25% of all jobs in the United States were manufacturing jobs. Today, that number is just 9%. In January of 2001, there were 17.1 million manufacturing workers in this country. Today, there are only 12.3 million manufacturing workers. In my small state of Vermont, we have lost 34 percent of our manufacturing jobs over the past 14 years. In January of 2001, Vermont had 47,000 factory jobs. Last fe February, it was down to 30,700. And that is true for virtually every state in this country. Historically, manufacturing jobs paid the highest wages available to blue collar workers. If you had a job in a manufacturing plant, if you had a union, the likelihood, likelihood was that you would earn decent wages, have decent benefits, and you can actually support your family. You earn the wages that enable you to take good care of your family. But with the decline of manufacturing, what has happened is we have seen a huge increase in service industry jobs, McDonald's, Walmart, where wages are low, benefits are nil, and American workers who work there are having a hard time surviving economically. Manufacturing goes down, people lose their jobs, and wages go down, and new jobs will be created which pay significantly less than the jobs that people used to have. This trade agreement, I think everybody acknowledges, is of enormous consequence. Uh, to working people all over this country. And we need more transparency. We need to know what is in this legislation. We need to involve the American people in this discussion. And, Mr. President, I must say that I am extremely disappointed that on a piece of legislation which involves 40 percent of the world's economy, that is the largest trade agreement in the history of the United States of America, much of the major media has virtually ignored this issue. Now, you may be for the agreement. You may be against the agreement. I am strongly against it, and I'll tell you why in a moment. But I would hope that we could all agree that this is an enormously important issue that deserves significant discussion on the part of the American people and their elected representatives. While the full text of the TPP has not been made public, there have been some leaks of what is included in it. And what I have seen is very disturbing. It has been estimated by outside experts that the U.S. would lose more than 130,000 jobs to Vietnam and Japan alone if the TPP goes into effect. But that is just the tip of the iceberg. At a time when corporations have already outsourced over 3 million service sector jobs in the U.S., the TPP includes rules that will make it even easier for corporate America to outsource call centers, computer programming, engineering, accounting, and medical diagnostic, diagnostic jobs. 
So this is not just manufacturing jobs. There are all kinds of other jobs which, if they can be done cheaper in other countries, those jobs will be sent there. I find it incomprehensible that, to the best of my knowledge, ABC, the ABC television network, has had zero coverage of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, zero. CBS television, zero coverage. NBC, zero coverage. PBS has had three mentions of the TPP. CNN has had zero coverage. Fox television has had four mentions. And MSNBC, mostly because of the excellent work of Ed Schultz, has covered it on uh, 33 occasions, and all of this since January of 2015. But how do the American people know what's going on if the major networks are virtually blocking out any serious discussion, any mention of the agreement? The fact of the matter is that TPP is just a new and easy way for corporations to ship jobs overseas and force Americans to compete with low-wage workers in Vietnam and other countries. And let us be clear and understand this. The minimum wage in Vietnam is 56 cents an hour. 56 cents an hour. And what this trade agreement says to American workers is you are now competing against people who in some cases will be working for 56 cents an hour. I think that that is grossly unfair. We should not force American workers into a race to the bottom. But Madam President, let's be clear. The TPP is much more than a free trade agreement. It is part of a global race to the bottom to boost the profits of large multinational corporations and Wall Street by outsourcing jobs, undercutting worker rights, dismantling labor, environmental health, food, safety, and financial laws, and allowing corporations to challenge our laws in international tribunals rather than our own court system. According to the well-respected economists at the Economic Policy Institute, NAFTA has led to the loss of more than 680,000 jobs. Not the creation of a million jobs, the loss of 680,000 American jobs. In 1993, the year before NAFTA was implemented, the United States had a trade surplus with Mexico of more than $1.6 billion. Last year, the trade deficit with Mexico was $53 billion. <laughs> Madam President, in 2011, uh, we were told that we just had to pass the South Korea Free Trade Agreement because of all the jobs it would create. Same argument. Another free trade agreement is going to be great for the American worker. U.S. Chamber of Commerce told us that this free trade agreement could create some 280,000 jobs in America. Instead, the Korean free trade agreement has led to the loss of some 60,000 jobs, and our trade deficit with that country has gone up from $16.6 billion in 2012 to $25 billion in 2014.